You're watching the Maryland Players Show. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today was a star at St. Joe's Prep in Philadelphia. He led the Catholic High School League in, in scoring a couple of years his junior and senior year with 20 hat, 21 and a half points per game. Uh, Catholic League MVP in his senior year at St. Joe's. Uh, second team parade All-American in his senior year as well at St. Joe's. Transitioned over to the University of Maryland from 1972 to 76. In 1974 was all ACC tournament first team. In 1975, all ACC tournament second team. In 1976, all ACC tournament second team as well. Wow. Um, remember of the elite eight team in 1974, 75 season. Um, a member of that 73, 74 team that is regarded as one of the uh, greatest teams in University of Maryland's history, if not the, you know, the biggest reason why they expanded uh, 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 having more than one team come from a conference, from one conference is because of that University of Maryland team. Uh, soft, in his sophomore year, averaged 12.2 points per game, shooting 55% from the field. That's good for top 30 in, in, uh, in, in Maryland's history for a single season. Three rebounds, three assists. In his junior year, 13 and a half points, 56% from the field. That's good, that's top 25 right there. And three rebounds as well. Senior year, 13 and a half points, 57% from the field. That's good for top 20 right there. The reason why I point out the field goal percentage because he is a two guard out there shooting almost 60% from the field. Just ridiculous. Career total points, 1,161 points. That's good for number 35 in University of Maryland's all time history. 55% from the field for his career. Uh, that's number 10 all time. 264 wow. rebounds, 219 assists, 485 field goals made, 10.3 points per game for his career. The 32nd pick in the 1976 NBA draft to the Cleveland Cavaliers and also a stint with the New Orleans Jazz. Welcome to the show, the great Mo Howard, man. Oh, man. Thank you for joining us today, brother. Thank you, Walt. I'm humbled. And you got, I, like, some of those stats you just spit out, I never knew that. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Numbers, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think a lot of the field goal percentage um, went to the fact that, you know, we played really fast. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we may still hold the record for most points per game. Yeah. Um, Without a three-point shot and no shot clock. I mean, what is going on? That is that is crazy. This no three-point line, no shot clock, yeah. especially in the era where teams just hold that ball. I mean, just craziness, yeah. man. Yeah. So I mean, we played really fast. We played with a lot of big guys. Our our like six, um, third, a uh, uh, three-man, four-man, and five-man were all six-nine or better yeah. for three of those years. So, you know, uh, John Lucas and myself, you know, we just <laughs> got out on the break, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. Big guys get those rebounds and just, and just get out on the break, especially the years that we played with Lynn Elmore, whom right. I believe is still our all time leading rebounder. Yeah. So, so tell me this. So, early on, what was it like for you growing up in Philly in the neighborhood, man? What was that like? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm from the north side of Philly. Um, you know, no, no highfalutin stuff. Like I really didn't realize that I was poor until I went to Maryland. <laughs> my, mom, my mom and dad pretty much provided everything that I, I needed, mm -hmm. and a lot of the things that I wanted. So, I just, you know, had a normal, normal um, life. Went to. Uh, um, the Roman Catholic High School that I'm sure all basketball fans know about that follow high school basketball. I went to Roman Catholic High School for three months. Wow. And then my father transferred me to St. Joseph's Prep. Um, I had no 
Was I that never, basketball related or no, not at all. Not at all. My father could give two dips about basketball. <laughs> but you know, it's a funny story. I had played my first uh game against Roman as a ninth grader. I was uh, I started on the junior varsity and I dressed for the varsity. And in the junior varsity game that day, I scored 21 points. And um, I couldn't wait to get home to tell my dad that I had scored all of these points in the JV game. And so before I could get it out, he says, tomorrow you're going to St. Joe's Prep. And I said, tomorrow, St. Joe's Prep? I said, I'm not, I can't go to St. Joe's Prep. He said, yeah, you are, you're going tomorrow. And I said, Dad, I can't go to St. Joe's Prep. And he, he looks at me and he says, look, kid, if you say that to me again, I'm going to slap the taste out of you. <laughs> and so I said, well, Dad, let me explain to you. I can't go there because you have to take an entrance exam. Right. And I haven't. He said, well, that's not what they told me. They told me to have you down there tomorrow. And so, you know, I, I went. Right. Um, yeah. Our St. Joseph Prep is similar to got to your Gonzaga. Okay. 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 Yeah. In Georgetown. Oh, yeah, I remember. Um, I remember my son playing in an AAU tournament up yes. there. So yeah, so I, I know the history. So speaking of the history of there in Philly, you know, with the Baker League and, mm. and things like that, where, where did your love from the game for the game? Where did that come from? Where did where did that start? So I will. T- I will be very honest with you. <laughs> um. The elementary school that I went to, they had a gym. And in order for you to be able to get into the gym to play basketball, you had to be in the sixth grade. And I wanted to get into this gym so bad that I went to the coach who was also a priest there and I told him that I could play basketball in the fourth grade. I had never made a hoop in my life. I had never made a hoop in my life, Walt. And for some reason, he took an interest in me. Um, he, he, he let me, you know, practice with the team. And, you know, the first couple of years, the best players on that team, you know, I would play one-on-one against them every day and they would beat the brakes off me every day. And they would never let me quit. Right. They would never let me quit. They beat, they beat me. They say, all right, run it back, run it back. Right. And so, um, this guy, the guy who was my very first coach, it was a priest, and his brother is Herb McGee. Now, I don't know if you know anything about Herb McGee, but Herb McGee is in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, he coached Philly U here, won a national championship. And um, if I'm not mistaken, he might be the winningest coach in all college basketball. And that was his younger brother so the guy who coached me my very first coach was the older brother of a hall of famer right okay so that's an awesome awesome entry to the game right yeah i i I, I sort of kind of lied my way into it (laughs) (laughs) hey you gotta get your way in there somewhere Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah. So look, you were you were a big time high school player, especially up in Philly, in in, in that particular league playing for St. Joe's. I'm assuming that you were highly recruited. Why did why did you choose the Uni- University of Maryland? True story. So, on my St. Joseph's Prep high school team, as a sophomore, there was a boy on our team that Maryland was recruiting. His name was John Jablonski. He's about six eight. He's pretty pretty good player. And so Coach Drizel staged a game for us versus Cardinal Gibbons before a Maryland game. And um, I scored my first high school basket in Cole Fieldhouse. Oh, wow. And subsequently that summer, um, the summer after my sophomore year, Coach asked uh, my high school coach, if I could work at the Maryland basketball camp in the summertime. And I, I worked at the camp um, after my, after my um, sophomore year, um, got to play with all the college players. You know how coach has the camp, all the college guys come. And um, I got to play against those guys in the evenings. And um, for a little skinny knife, 10th uh, grader, you know, I kind of held my own 
And so, um, you know, the, that whole experience was always etched in my mind, right? Um, you know, like going to Cold Field House in the summertime every day, playing in that big arena against these really good guys sort of kind of left a, a, a lasting impression on me. Okay. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, mm -hmm. so I've been watching the, um, the ACC, the history, the history series or what have you. And so... You know, just just growing up a, a Big East and ACC fan, it's, it's you know, you hear the stories about David Thompson, but to actually like see him, the highlights of it, I'm just like, wow, man. You you were a guy who competed against him uh, um, on, on several occasions. Yeah, what would, would you rate David Thompson, man, in terms of uh, uh, college players? Uh, well, there's no question in my mind, he was the best college basketball player of my era. Wow. Okay, there, there was nothing that, you know, and people don't realize this guy was an outstanding jump shooter. Right. I don't mean good. I mean, outstanding. And his elevation on his shot was such that, like, you couldn't get near it. Right. Nobody, like, I mean, Elmore played him, Tom Millen played him, Tom Moy played him, Owen Brown played him. All those guys were 6'9 or taller. So, I mean, to see him do what he did, like I said, in the, in the, um, in the video of the ACC, uh, a history of the ACC tournament, like nobody could tell me anything about David Thompson's greatness, right? Because he had all of his best games against that. <laughs> you know, he, used to, he used to blow us up like balloons, man. He used to blow us up like yeah. the Funny so, story. So Lucas is from North Carolina. Yeah. And um, you know, Lucas and I were freshmen together. And um we we'd be sitting in our dorm room over there in Ellicott Hall, and he starts <laughs> talking about and he started talking about David Thompson and, and some of the stuff that he was doing. Like they all play pickup down at Duke in the right. summer times. And um he was telling me about this dude was six four was catching people, guys were shooting jump shots out the corner, and David Thompson was running out of the lane catching guys' shots. <laughs> guys were shooting shots out of the corner, he was catching his shots. So I looked at him, I shook my head, and I was like, this guy's from North Carolina, man, they ain't, they ain't playing basketball down there like that. They can't be playing basketball right, down there. Right, right. <laughs> Then when I saw this dude, man, I was like, oh my God, I never seen anybody like him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the highlights is just crazy, man. So you talk about that, that 73, 74 team, you know, uh, yourself, John Lucas, uh, Lynn Elmore, Tommy Millen. So then you lose those guys um, after uh, that season. And now you have, uh, uh, you have Brad Davis, mm -hmm. Steve Shepard come in. And I mean, you guys get to the Elite Eight, you lose two of your prime bigs, you don't replace them really. And you know, uh, these young guys come in and, and I mean, when I'm looking at the stats, you guys had six, six dudes that average double figures. I mean, how did y'all, how did y'all accomplish that? Well, I think um, out of necessity, you know, um, Tom McMillan was a great scorer. And Lynn was a great rebounder. So in order for us to compete, you know, like they say today, next man up, right? Yeah. So um, that team was probably better than the 73-74 team in so much as we won the regular ACC championship, regular season ACC championship by beating all the teams on Tobacco Road. So, you know, that in itself was a feat. We, 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 we beat Carolina so bad at the at Carmichael Auditorium that people were actually crying, Walt. <laughs> the Carolina people were crying. This was Phil Ford's first year, and, uh, you know, they had Walter Davis and um, Mitch Kupchak and Tom Guard. So they had a really, really good team, if I'm not mistaken. They were nationally ranked as well. But um, getting back to your question, so Luke and I, you know, we were pretty, we were pretty fair backcourt. And um, I don't know if you know this or not, but Brad Davis actually played center in college, in high school. Wow. He was a center. <laughs> and, when, and when he came to Maryland, for some reason, 
coach, you know, put him on, put him at the one. He moved John to two, and I was the three man. And so that was the advent of the three guard offense. You know, I I just think that coach, you know, he wanted to play all of us, and the only way that he could do it was to play all of us. Right, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that, that was, there, man, no matter what size they are. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a pretty good team too. Like, you know, back in my day, UCLA was the king of the king of the hill, you know, and um, they always had great teams. They won national, they won consecutive national championships like nobody's business. And um, you know, one of the reasons why I came to Maryland was because um Coach Drizel was saying, you know, we're going to make UCLA the, I mean, Maryland, the UCLA of the East. Well, UCLA didn't recruit me. <laughs> so I wanted to go where I had a chance to play against them guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, true story too. So practice school starts and the first day of pickup and I'm looking at all the guys out there playing and, um, you know, my freshman year, there were there were seven high school All Americans on our team, and I'm sitting in Cole Fieldhouse on the floor next to J.J. Bush, because it was also J.J.'s first year at Maryland as well, and I'm sitting next to J.J. and I'm watching these guys play, and I said out loud, you know, I think I might have made a mistake coming here, you know, because those guys were that good. I had never been in a gym. I had never been in a gym where you know college guys were that good. Yeah, you know, so it was kind of scary. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I could, I could definitely understand that. It was kind of scary. Yeah, they, them dudes go to another level when you're playing, playing against guys like that. So Especially. look, you had a lot of, you had a lot of success in your college career, man. Then you, you uh, are drafted um, in the second round to the Cleveland Cavs, and and I'm looking at that second round, man. It was guys like Alex English. Dennis Johnson, I mean, Hall of Fame players in the second round in that in that draft class. How how did it feel to get drafted in the NBA, uh, especially in that day? You know, in, in today's game, it, it is a it's a um, it's a, a the gratification of playing at the highest level in your profession, but also uh, financially uh, what you achieve. But it wasn't that way back in the day. So what no, was no, 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 in no. The NBA man. So I grew up. Like, until the old heads told me that I was good, <laughs> I was always trying, you know what I'm saying? The old heads that, met, you know, you play within the playground or the schoolyard. Once they told you that you were good, then you, you could smell your stuff a little bit, right? So um, I, when I, I never thought about, like, going pros. I, like, when I went to Maryland, you know, I just wanted to play on the national championship team. The idea of going to the NBA like really never crossed my mind. But you also have to remember at that time, we had a, another league, which was a, the ABA. And um, my senior year in 1976, the ABA merged with the NBA. Mm -hmm. So what you had was the, M the NBA only took four teams, right? Denver, the Nets, the Pacers, and the Spurs. There were 12 teams in the league. So even though I had gotten drafted, I mean, I was a, I, I was a pretty good position, I thought, right? Right. Even though I had gotten drafted, there were like eight teams of guys who were proven vets. Yeah. Okay? Moses Malone did not have a team. Wow. Okay. Uh, Maurice Lucas did not have a team. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. So – you know, when I went to camp that, that, um, that fall, you know, I went and I practiced against the rookies and I made it through the rookie camp. And then the veterans came in. And then, you know, I'm having great success during the veteran camp. And then they started bringing in free agent dudes from the ABA. Right. You know? Now, I mean, not only that, um, that Cleveland Cavalier team had won their division a year before. And of the 12 players on the team, 11 of them had guarantees. Oh, wow. So it was, yeah, it was up to me and the guy that they picked in the first round. You know, we went at it every day. We went at it hard every day. I'm sure. And, um, you know, it was, it was a battle, man. It was a battle. So, um, 
you know, when they started cutting dudes, I got cut because I was the second round dude. Right, right. right? Yep. I was the second round dude. And our coach and watching the era shrinks. Yeah, man. Train, yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> and our coach was also our general manager. Right. So which is like unheard of today. Mm -hmm. So um yeah. Well, I mean, it was a great experience. And then a couple a couple weeks after I got cut from Cleveland, I got a call from the New Orleans Jazz. And um, the general manager of the New Orleans Jazz was Press Maravich. Now, um, as a senior at Maryland, we played against Appalachian State. And Coach Press Maravich was the coach. And I remember having a really good game. I might've got like 25, 26 in the game. And when, coach, and when coach took me out the game, I went over out of respect to shake Coach Maravich's hand before you know, I went back to the bench. And um, Coach Maravich told me that he remembered that, you know? And so when, a, when an opportunity became available, he called me up. There you go. See? Yeah. You never know. You never know with those gestures what happens, man. You yeah. Know. Sometimes it's yeah. nice to be, it's sometimes it's, you know, it's it's good to be important, but it's more important to be nice, right? Absolutely. So, <laughs> this. so how much fun is it, you know, watching your son Ashley coach? You know, he coached that villain, assistant coach at Villanova now, head yeah. coach at LaSalle, man. How how has that experience been for you? Wow. So you know, I always tell people, like, everybody doesn't love basketball the way that we do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love high-level basketball. I love low-level basketball, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? But to see, you know, somebody in my family achieve, and, I, and we used to talk about this, you know, because he started out at Drexel, um, and, and he went to LaSalle. His first actual coaching job where he got paid was at LaSalle. And I would always talk to him about winning national championships. Um, you know, most of those schools, they don't, they don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. They don't say, you know, we're going we're gonna to win a national championship. They just say, we're going to put our team out there. We're going to play hard and be the best team that we could be. And so um, he's at Villanova and he, and he says to me, he says, dad, you know, this is, this is what we've always talked about, like a chance to, to play for a national championship. And so to see all of that play out, yeah. it was really, really gratifying, Juan. I'm gonna tell you, man, I cried like a baby, <laughs> man. And then, and, then, and then a year later, they did it again. Yeah. They did it again. Like, I don't know, like I know a couple guys who played on two NCAA championship teams most of them played either UCLA or Duke, right? right. right. <laughs> but, um, you know, to have all of that in my family um, was really, really gratifying. It was really gratifying. I mean, I could just imagine something like that, man. I mean, you must be proud. Yeah, yeah, true story. So in 2002, uh -huh. you know, Maryland is playing for the national championship in, um, in, in Atlanta. And um, I took both of my sons down there to 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 see the games <laughs> without any tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so I figure I get to I get down there and I'll mow Howard my way around <laughs> and stuff. And so um, I managed to get two tickets. And I and I and I said to my sons, I said to Ashley, I said, uh, well, no, I said, look, I got two tickets. I would like for you and your brother to go to the game. So Ashley says to me, he says, he says, dad, you know, I can't go to this game. You know, this is your moment. Like this is your school's moment. And I want you to be there, you know? And so I said, well, if you really feel that way about it, then you got to go. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'll sit in the hotel and watch the game on TV. Right. And then my little guy, he was like nine or 10 at the time. He says, yeah, dad, you know, I want you to go to the game. I said, well, if I go to the game, what are you going to do? <laughs> he says, well, I'm going to sit in the car and wait for you. Oh, wow. Oh, so I said, y'all got to go. You know what <laughs> I mean? But after that game, after that game, Ashley said to me, he said, Dad, he said, you know, one day I'm going to be coaching in that game. Right. 
self-fulfilling prophecy, right? There you go. Yeah, man. Twice. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Twice. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. So, look, <clears throat> last question for you, Mo. I ask all my guests, you know, my, my viewers love to hear this part. Tell me something about yourself that most do not know. I am a girl dad of the highest order. Okay. <laughs> I have a daughter, I have a granddaughter, and I have a daughter-in-law. And I just, I mean, I guess, you know, um, I just love them so much. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I have to always protect them. Um, like my my daughter-in-law, she got a husband, right? <laughs> but you know, I don't try to get in their in their way, but I do try to, you know, to be there for them when I can. And my daughter and my granddaughter, they have no choice. <laughs> they have no choice. So, um, you know, I love all of them equally. Like I tell my sons all the time, you guys know I love you with all my heart. I said, but the young ladies, you know, the, the daughter-in-law, the granddaughter, and the daughter, I admire them. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Man. <laughs> hey, Mo, oh, man, it's such a pleasure to talk with you, brother. You know, I just have so much respect for you. And, uh, oh, man. man, you know, uh, you, you're so uh, gracious with your time when you come around. Uh, it's just a, a pleasure to be able to talk with you and pick your brain about things, man. And, uh, man, it's just such a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. One of the greats ever, Mo Howard. Thank you so Thank much, you. brother. Thank you, Walt. Appreciate you, brother. To host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, create a profile in Fan Media Network. Then look for the news page in our website and fan show resources page. Help yourself. We give show hosts a show graphic and team colors, a simple short show format, tips on pre- and post-production, ideas to get fans and guests on your show, Apple News distribution and show sponsorship sales and services to help featured show hosts earn money. Show hosts use our iPhone app to publish their shows. Our website supports Android users.